Welcome to Convos from the Couch by Life Stance Health, where leading mental health professionals help guide you on your journey to a healthier, more fulfilling life. Hello, everyone. I'm Nicolette Lianza. And on this episode, I'll be talking with therapist Rachel Mertens about the importance of women's mental health. So welcome, Rachel. Great to have you on. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Really important topic here today. So I look forward to us talking more yes. about it. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, gosh. I have been in the mental health field for six or six and a half years now. I have um, a background in social work. That's what my bachelor's is in. Um, I went and got my master's in counseling. Um, I absolutely love it. I work primarily with a lot of kids, um, but I am a mom of three. So I, they're all four and under. So my oldest oh my is gosh. four. <laughs> yeah. So my oldest is four. And then our twins turn two on Wednesday. Wow. This week. Wow. So it's very busy all the time. Yeah. So that's a little bit about that. So that's, I love working with kids, but with having three young kids, I've taken a special interest in maternal mental health and perinatal health in general and just how important it is for women to have the care that they need mentally and emotionally after having children and even before. And and before we even dive deeper into our topic of uh, the importance of women's mental health, I want to say that this episode is for anyone who identifies as a woman. So. Yes. Yes. So let's get started. What do you believe are the biggest challenges facing women when it comes to the mental health? I don't know. I feel like it actually jumps into our second question, which is like people feeling women are too emotional, if that makes sense, like Mm -hmm. that we just go see therapists for um, emotional support and not actually to work on things. And I think, to be honest with you, as far as the perinatal and just like postpartum and that kind of thing, and in general, I think it's just really hard to find a therapist that that matches who you are and what your needs are in that moment, for sure. I know, I agree. I think there's just so much place on women as well, especially if you're working full time and you're doing parenting duties and oh, yeah. everything else. It definitely yeah. like stress that goes along with that. For Huge sure. Huge balancing act between if you work full time, like you said, which I do, I work full time with Life Stance. I have mm-hmm. three young children. I have a small business outside of this where I do my own photography stuff. Um, I'm trying to get that up and running too. So it's a very fine balancing act. And I actually have a client. She says it wonderfully. She's I'm balancing all of these spinning plates. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. And I'm trying not to drop them because if I do then they all come crashing down. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges is like women, especially when we have children, And even just in a marriage or just in general, like Mm -hmm. we balance so many hats of being wife, caretaker, homemaker, parent, employee, like that kind of thing. And it's hard to find a healthy balance between all of those. I call them my hats. I wear many hats in my day-to-day basis and it can get very overwhelming very quickly. So for sure. Oh my gosh. Yes. And jumping back to, you mentioned about women being perceived as too emotional. I I think this is where stereotypes come in. Mm -hmm. We've been looking at societal expectations around femininity. Mm -hmm. How does all that impact women's mental health? I think it, I think it makes it hard for women to be comfortable with coming in to talk to someone when we're seen as too emotional or too up and down. I have a lot of couples that I work with and the husband is often saying, oh, she's so like up and down, very hot and cold, like that kind of thing. And it's women deal with, and men do too. I'm not discounting men, but women deal with so much and we have so much going on in our bodies and like that kind of thing. And when you throw in having children and our hormones being all over the place, like it just, it's a whole like volcano waiting to erupt. And so when it does emotionally erupt, it's, I feel like oftentimes scary for people in general to, to feel and witness someone have that emotional outburst. And so I definitely think that puts a stereotype on women of being too emotional 
as I use air quotes to say that because, (laughs) oh, she had an outburst. So she must be way too emotional to handle this or crying in a meeting is seen as, oh, she doesn't know how to handle her emotions appropriately when really we're just empathizing and feeling the emotions with the person that's sharing their story. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I think for some women, maybe even particular women of power might feel like they need to really suppress that because of that stereotype. And then that, that's just a whole other pressure there of yeah. the expectation. Well, you're a woman, you're going to cry. And no, I'm not going to cry. But then also the perception of being the a bee, right? If yes, I, yes. If I come across Absolutely. too stern or, or whatever. Right? Absolutely. So. Yeah. I have a lot of clients, even teenage like female clients mm-hmm. who are like, I can't, uh, one actually in particular comes to mind. She's, I can't show any emotion because it's a weakness I'm taken advantage of. If I show weak that emotion and I'm like, why can't you just smile? Like you you joke and laugh with me, smile with your dad or that kind of thing. She's no, because if I do that, I let my guard down and then it's game over. And I'm like, I can't imagine living like that for one at 15, 16 years old let alone into my thirties or into my forties, like having to Mm -hmm. suppress all of that. It's no wonder people are having emotional outbursts because they just push it down so much that the tiniest thing can just pop that lid very quickly. So very true. Tell us a bit why perinatal mental health is so important. I think I've touched on it a little bit, but like when you think about just like motherhood in general, there's so much that goes into it, right? Like we're not talking about just after birth. That's always been like a big focus recently is like that postpartum care. But what people don't realize is that there's so much before getting pregnant Mm -hmm. too. If you have infertility issues or you have a lot of miscarriages or that kind of thing that can then lead to a lot of issues during the pregnancy. If you struggle with anxiety or depression before getting pregnant, then you have a higher chance of having it postpartum as well, or during pregnancy. And there's not very many medications that are pregnancy safe or Uh, breastfeeding safe. So then women feel forced to either go off of their medication or not take medication at all, which then just causes the whole process to unravel all over Mm -hmm. again. So there's a lot there. And so it needs to be more of a focus of the whole process instead of just postpartum, which is very important because our hormones at that point are just like coursing and raging from all of these changes but like that pre-pregnancy stage is really important too because we're pushing our bodies to carry a child and then during pregnancy if you have complications or preeclampsia or gestational Mm -hmm. diabetes even which is not even really that serious but it causes a lot of stress because you're dealing with something that you never thought you were going to have to deal with. Having that constant support through the whole process is really important to then have hopefully a healthy pregnancy and a healthy birth, and then be able to navigate things postpartum a little bit easier as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you can't tell I get a little passionate. No, I love it. Love the passion. Definitely. <laughs> so what are some strategies that women can do to help promote and maintain positive mental health? Ooh, I think the biggest thing that comes to mind is just don't be afraid to ask, ask for help. That was one of the, I think biggest things that I struggled with was after I had my oldest, uh, I've always struggled with anxiety, like personal note, I've always struggled with anxiety and it was fine during my pregnancy because we were so excited and we were just eager to meet this little baby. And then I was at home for six weeks by myself and with this infant who really wasn't tiny, he was nine pounds at birth. So he was not tiny by any (laughs) means, but being at home with this human that fully depended on me and there's no handbook to how to do things properly. So I waited way too long to actually reach out. I was at the point of having an emotional meltdown going back to the emotions, right? I was shoving those emotions down so much that I was so stressed with work after going back and COVID was hitting and that kind of thing. 
And I had this baby at home that depended on me and I was trying to nurse and feed him and that kind of thing. And so it, I wait, I waited way too long. And my mom was like, you got to get help. Like you got to do something. And so I did. And having done that then helped when I had my twins I recognized the signs a lot faster and I immediately reached out for that help because I knew I couldn't go down that really dangerous path again. And so I think that's the biggest thing is talk to your doctors about things, reach out for support. There's a great resource. Poem is a resource. I think if you just Google poem, it's a mental health agency for women who are either trying, expecting new moms have experienced loss. I volunteer with the program. So that's why I'm talking about it is because I help run a support group for moms. So that is a huge resource and a huge thing that could help with maintaining mental health is they lead groups every, every Wednesday or virtual groups. And then I think every Saturday is an in-person group. They have groups for women of color which is especially important. I could go on a whole other tangent about that. (laughs) But yeah, I would say that's probably one of the biggest strategies is just reach out for that help early in whatever capacity you can. And please don't let anyone ever tell you that you're fine and things will get better and that kind of thing. If you need support, get that support and get it early. So definitely. Any other takeaways you'd like to share? Moms are important too. And Dads too, but this was about women today. I think just moms are important and we do a lot, whether you're a woman trying to get pregnant or you're currently pregnant or that kind of thing, like you're important and your needs and what you want are important. And so don't be afraid to advocate for those things, whatever that looks like. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you for sharing your insights with us today. Yeah. Thank you for having me today. I really appreciate it. I'd also like to thank the team behind the podcast, Jason Clayton, Juliana Wooden, and Chris Kelman. A special thank you to Jason Clayton, who edits our episodes. Thank you for listening to Convos from the Couch. Take care, everyone. <laughs>